Hey, good morning, everybody. It's Valerie here, back um, to the practice. Most of us working telehealth, but every now and again, we get the unique opportunity back in the practice. And I wanted to, uh, this is totally unscripted. Here's Lauren. Yes, it is. Lauren Hello. is a clinical psychologist registrar with our practice and our nearest recruit. Yeah. Um, Lauren actually started how not too long before the COVID stuff, Lauren? Yeah, um, beginning of February, so it'd be three months here. Three months, and Lauren is full-time, and she was employed um, and offered the position way before COVID was a thing. And of course, uh, she started with uh, the COVID adventure. Yes. <laughs> uh, I haven't prepared Lauren at all, and I guess that's a part of the issue is of actually, when things don't go according to plan, I think many of us are struggling with um, trying to figure out, you know, as a business owner, as an employee, how do we actually navigate these unknown waters and, and what, what does it actually really look like? Now, Lauren and I have actually scheduled for today to do a review of what we call a 90 day plan. Lauren is actually um, on leave from tomorrow because <laughs> she's getting married. Um, and it so happens that it kind of coincides anyway with the end of one chunk of her 90 day um, period with us. So Lauren, what is a 90 day plan? Um, so when I started work here, Valerie and I sat down and we made a plan for what we'd like to achieve in the first 90 days of um, my job here. Uh, we, the plan involved kind of looking at different areas in terms of uh, making goals for my work with clients, making goals for my um, training and the learning and development that I'll do as well as, you know, ways to kind of work with the practice and how we kind of reach out to our doctors and things like that. So yeah, we just made goals in all those different areas. All right. And now one can be tempted to think, Lauren, that when COVID hit, that it might have been a great idea to just throw out the 90 day plan. Yes. <laughs> um, but we didn't, we didn't, no. we didn't throw it out. Uh, what was, what's been your experience of having done the 90 day plan before things changed? And, and there's been tremendous change, Lauren. Yeah. We've had to refigure how to do therapy. We had to mm -hmm. refigure how you and I would even sit in the, like a space to do supervision and training and things like that. Mm -hmm. What's been your experience of having a 90 day plan and then have the world shift? What's that like? <laughs> Um, I think, look, like it, right, whenever, whenever we make any plans, we kind of have to hold them a little bit lightly mm -hmm. and know that things can change at any moment. So it was an experience where we both, I think, had to be a bit flexible with the plan mm -hmm. and know that, you know, the world looks so different right now. There are things that have come up that uh, we never would have expected when we started, mm -hmm. even when COVID was around and was happening, but, um, the, you know, it wasn't such a big thing. Um, so it just took some kind of conversation and kind of readjusting our priorities and things that, you know, we really had to do to figure out how to work differently in light of COVID mm. and prioritizing them. And some other things kind of fell off the mm. plan a little bit, uh, but that's okay. Uh, we definitely had lots on our plate. <laughs> it was it was just the, you know, being flexible and, and, and acting in a different that's all right. I like what you're saying, flexibility in terms of not being too invested when things don't go according to plan. Yeah. I think there's another element of being adaptable. So would you say that other things that you weren't anticipating got put onto your, your, your yeah. work and your 90 day plan? I mean, all the telehealth appointments, I, we <laughs> didn't plan for that at all. That wasn't one of our goals, adjusting to doing therapy online. Um, yeah, they came on. But so you and I are about, so adaptability would be my word for yeah. that. We just have to adapt to the situation. So uh, what I'm hearing is uh, it wasn't a waste of time to have a plan because you no. still get a sense of those are the overall goals mm. anyway. So you and I are now going to sit down and do a review of that 90 day plan. And I think for some people that can be quite anxiety provoking, Lauren, especially when people think like, you know, I haven't done the things on the plan. It's not my fault. Wouldn't. You know, I think there's a real sense of helplessness that can set in when you start to review those things. And I hope that that is not the case for you. Um, and after we review it, we are going to release you to go back um, and get married <laughs> and have some time off. And when you come back, we're actually going to do your next 90 day plan. 
do you think that that is still a worthwhile experience? For sure. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I like having plans because it gives me a direction to head in. It helps me keep on track, helps me keep focus. You know, when I have days, I'm like, oh, did I, you know, do enough or whatever? I'm like, okay, well, I have 90 days to do these things. Um, so, yeah, I think it's super helpful. It's, it kind of gives you a sense of knowing that you have a direction and being yeah. able to name achievements as well. So yeah. even if things accomplished or finished on the plan you can still celebrate i hope that as we do this that we evaluated it you know mm -hmm. we gave it a go um it gave us some information and the thing i like to say is it gave us data to be able to see okay we tried it do we have to change our direction or do we stay in the same direction mm -hmm. and i think one of my concerns right now for um, those of us who are entering another phase um, things are overwhelming it's the combination of helplessness and hopelessness right mm -hmm. helplessness and hopelessness that we see coming up helplessness makes us feel anxious and hopelessness actually brings in a, a, a depression or, or a low mood and it, it may be really tempting to just say let's drift and let's you know kind of just and it's important for us to go with the flow at the same time being aimless and directionless um, can also be counterproductive to feelings of helplessness and hopelessness because mm -hmm. we don't know what we're looking forward to mm -hmm. and we also don't have any feedback or encouragement for ourselves to say that <clears throat> here are some things sometimes some most of it will be small mm -hmm. um, a lot of it will be inventive and, and, and we don't know we're experimenting and we're trying it but their name they're on paper you can look back and you can actually um, give yourself a pat on the back or even just adopt a, a curious attitude of saying um, these are some of the things that were interesting or I learned mm. um, or I discovered about you know myself and my mm. work all right thanks Lauren that's all right bye